Hey, how you doing? So this is Neil from MasterPaintingNow.com. I'm a top art instructor on Udemy with over 70,000 students. And hey, so in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make corrections to a drawing you might have done. So if you find yourself doing drawings like this, basically a critique, if you find yourself doing drawings like this and you want to get better at, at making your things look more realistic, I mean, you can still do cartoon style, but there's certain things you can you can do. Like for example, could easily just fix this part right here. See these the lines, how they just kind of, they're parallel to each other, symmetrical. Like hardly anything on the body is symmetrical like that, especially when it comes to like everything other than like the, your eyes and stuff, right? So instead to avoid this kind of, um, see how it goes like this, like this, and then look at perfectly even on each side like that. So it ends up looking like this, right? It looks weird. Like, I don't know, Sasha's is linking, linking together or something. And if you know a little bit of anatomy, you know how to avoid that right away because you know that the deltoid, you know, comes down into the arm and then you have the bicep, tricep here and the brachialis in between. And then you know you have this muscle that kind of comes from, tucks like in between the brachialis and the, and the, the triceps. And it kind of comes out like this and kind of bulges out. And then it wraps around to the other side. Then you have this, these muscles right here that kind of come like that. And then this then this more bulky part comes out like this, right? So you have something that looks more like this. It kind of has this shape here like that. And then, and then it goes on this shape. So you have this, right? So it's not even. And this would actually come down a little bit further, right? So you have this kind of shape here comes, you can even do that straight and comes out like that. That's more the shape of the arm on the inside, you know, come here and then come down like that. So you have this angle here. This is the part that sticks out, and that's the part that sticks out. If you understand these kind of basic anatomy things, it's really easy to not make these kinds of mistakes. But even if you don't know, I should admit to this on a different layer, if you don't know those kinds of anatomy tricks, um, or not tricks, but just know the anatomy knowledge, rather, you can still kind of just, just avoid this by going, remembering, don't do snowman stuff, right? Things should be asymmetrical. So... The bumps, I'm going to make it angled, right? Shouldn't be like this. They shouldn't be parallel to each other, right? They should be not parallel to each other. So, if, for example, for how you want the lower arm, the lower arm should be like this, right? You have this angle like that. The same thing happens to the legs, by the way. So when you draw the legs from the backhand side, you would have, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this for a second so I can, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So the legs from the backhand side, let's say you have, we'll just kind of do some ovals, for the two parts of the legs real fast. Now, if you wanted to to make this look accurate, you kind of have the serratus muscle from the front side. And we're gonna still draw that from the from the from this side over here. And then you have this muscle comes back here, the calf muscles. And actually, we could do it from the front or back, so I guess it doesn't really matter. The the principle is the same. But what's important is you have this asymmetry here. And this and this calf comes down further like this. Right, so you have this asymmetry here, right? The the widest part here and here is like that. And that that idea is persistent throughout the figure. So the first thing this person could have done to fix this up is and also the deltoid right here. It actually divide this in half. It it should go it should, pretty much it's about right. It should be more shaped like that, but it goes down to the halfway point of the arm. Right about where the nipples are. So she has that right. Or I don't know if this is a guy or girl that drew this. But anyway, so that's how that would be, and that would be shaped more like this. And if they just made this line like this, and this line like that, that right there, that little change would make a huge difference in this drawing, just that one little change. But there's a lot of other anatomical issues with this drawing. I'm going to go through them. We'll do a quick redraw of it so that it looks correct. One thing is the head is huge. So... If you go from here, that's about where the top of the head, the skull would be. And you can see here, right? It's like three heads and one third of a head, right? So it should be four heads, four heads tall. Now you could do cartoon style stuff where you can break that rule and go, well, I want to have a bigger head. That's fine. So maybe they wanted to have a bigger head, but it just seems like everything else is kind of trying to fall into more of the line of realism. And that definitely doesn't fall into the line of realism. So I would probably give her a normal size head in this case. Uh, the neck is really thin. That's fine for, you know, 
comic type stuff that's often done or cartoon type stuff you can do that but other things that you know like for example you have the arm coming this way for the most part it's right like the foreshortening is pretty pretty accurate but i would have the deltoid comes up like this and it wraps around that part right there is pretty accurate and then how the arm will attach the next part here the bicep and the you, know, you also have the bicep and the tricep and it's going to come out like this right then you'll have the forearm so i would probably show you know, all that before we got to the hand and then the way the hand is is also incorrect so when you're holding something you can do this you can actually do this yourself like just grab something that's kind of thick like a board or just something and hold on to it you'll notice that you can't do this with your hand you can't make a perfect flat flat knuckles like this that's impossible you just can't do it when you're holding on you can do it when you make a fist but you can't do it when you're holding on to something when you put something in your hand these knuckles are going to stick out it's going to be more like this it's going to come like that that's these knuckles and then you'll see these this parts of the finger like that you won't see the other parts of the finger that come in and then the thumb would kind of wrap and you might be able to see part of it and then you'd have the sign so that would be more how it would be All right we'll get into that the waist here is really really thin I mean it comes down to this really thin area um, that could be fine I think you can you can do something like that but the anatomy of the breast is just wrong you notice if I continue the line for the breast here they're basically almost circles that's not how breasts work she doesn't have a bra on and so naturally her breast would want to pull more out this way because of gravity now they don't pull straight down the reason why they don't pull straight down is remember we're on a rib cage and the rib cage right has curvature to it it's not a flat wall if it was if you just put water balloons against a flat wall then yeah they're gonna hang straight down because of gravity right but if you put them on a cylinder right hang two water balloons right here on a cylinder they're not gonna hang straight down they're gonna kind of go they're gonna they're gonna flow with the curvature of what they're hanging on and they're gonna have this kind of shape here this kind of angled shape I have a whole thing where I talk about how to draw breasts I actually have several videos on drawing realistic breasts they did put the space here that's good that should that should be there because you have to have this you know skin that comes up right here that allows it to you know the part of the pec muscles they actually should be a little bit lower but that's fine so what you should do instead is think about ovals like this think about this heart shape right here if you think about this heart shape that's the shape of the breast right and if you, even if you had a bra on a push-up bra you might be able to get shape like that but it's going to push them together more and you're going to have cleavage like this but she doesn't have a bra on so come like this I come like down like this first and then I swoop out at an angle down and then swoop out at an angle oops like so so you want the more of the angled shape like this right so basically you're drawing two ovals at angles like that but you want to make them you know almost round so an oval butt like that oval like that and then you just kind of draw that part of it right that's how you do the breast another thing um, is how she's standing so her legs here seem unnatural because see how her her uh, collarbones and stuff are kind of tilted like this so because she's kind of tilted like this and she has this kind of you know curve right here to her spine it comes back like this her hips should be opposite of that right she should have a pinch here and then alongside here right so to do that you you know she kind of has a pinch here and it's kind of like that you kind of see that, that that might be what they're trying to do but it should come up higher and then you should have this you know angle here to the hips so the whole hips are going to be kind of angled like this and then this leg is going to come down and this leg might kick out just a little bit more right so these are things that we can do to improve the overall pose let's go ahead and get started doing that so i'm debating whether or not i kind of want to keep the, at least keep the same um size as they did and then we'll and maybe even the same size head and everything 
and then we'll just kind of redo some things. There's some things in the phase two I would change. I would have, I would raise the nose up a little bit, so I would have taken the nose, and I would have raised it up just a little bit here. Is it going to let me do that? Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Like this. I would have raised it up just a tad bit like this. And then I would have raised the lips up a tad. To give it a little bit more of a chin. I didn't mean to do that. Come on. Now it looks kind of weird because you have the odd color here. So i got to come back and try to color it with the color that he has there. I would, a little bit lower than that. That looks weird now. So I would have made the lips a little bit lower than that. It's kind of hard to adjust without zooming in. But anyway, we'll fix it all. And then uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't draw this so much. I would make it, and you know, if you want to come in just, just a little bit and then come down to, I would come down just a little bit more with this shape here. And then I would just kind of hint at the cheeks. Don't like come all in with lines. It makes characters look older. All right, so let's get started then. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put the basic idea here for the head because I think that well, we'll use the side of the head, the size of the head that they have. I'm going to do my corrections right now for the shape. I'm going to come a little bit thicker with the neck. These muscles here. Collarbones are fine. Let's go ahead and, this is a lot of where we're going to have to edit a lot of stuff here. So let's go ahead and start adding in like the actual shapes and everything that would be here. So let's come in with, I'm going to make another, another layer. This will be like my sketch layer. So you want to come with our rib cage. We'll kind of, you know, start like this. If we keep her thin like this, we can, we can do that. It's fine. I would make the rib cage a little bit thicker if we're going to do more realistic, but we can go super thin like this right down the center, come up like that. That's like the rib cage. Now we got to think about how is the rib cage tilted, right? Because if we have a tilt to the rib cage at all, which we do because of this, then we could take the rib cage and go, all right, let's go ahead and tilt it. Now you'd actually just draw it tilted, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of just do this like this. That's why I drew it on different layers. So you can kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. And okay. So now we have the rib cage. Boom comes out over here like that. So now, now it's as, as an angle. And then we need to pull this angle back here like that for the for the hips. But the hips need to be at an angle, right? So we got to go like this. I'm trying to keep it similar to what, what they have here. Now the basic shape I like to draw, you can do, just draw a shape like that. It's kind of like the underwear shape. But one of the shapes I like to draw, let's go ahead and get rid of this for a second, make a new layer. Is like I have this is the upper body, and then I have the arch for the rib cage, and I just come straight down with that shape like this, and that's that's like the basic shape I think about. And then you want to cut into this a little bit. So like, if you think about um, I'm trying to think of different divisions you can think about. So these are the collarbones. And you go from here to here and think about the halfway point. The halfway point is pretty much where you're going to have this bend right here happening, that kind of hourglass figure thing happening. That's about where the ribs will end. And how you know that is also because from crotch to collarbone or from arm to crotch, you divide that in half into perfect halves. And that's where the elbow goes. and That's where the bottom of the rib cage goes. So it's kind of the same thing. Just think about collarbone to crotch and divide in half. It's the same concept. And then we know that the the breasts fall along the ridge line of the rib cage, and they're going to fall, you know, up here like that. Um, and then you go from like where the nipples kind of would be, and come down that same that same far down from the halfway point, kind of. That's kind of where you have the belly button. But also where this is here, you start to have the bone starts to come out and forms the hips here, like this, right? And then somewhere right about if you take this and divide it into four, like one two, three, four, like that. It's that second area here where you have your leg lines or your iliac line. And that basically where your legs kind of bend and attach. You might have a little bit of skin, right? Like just a little bit like that in between the two segments, that kind of squish and bend. And so if the leg were, were coming out to the side, that would be like where it would happen. 
right? So the legs start to, they start here. The widest part of a female is here, so that because of the bone that comes out, the femur bone. So we can come out like that and then come in, out, and come in, right? And that's the that's the basic idea that I think about. Anyway, so there's a lot of different like relative things you can think about, different ways you can memorize like proportions, relative proportions. So with this, this works good. So now we can have that pinch, right? So we have this pinch side and we have this being the stretch side, right? So we want to kind of push that, maybe even exaggerate it. But for here, we're going to kind of come up with this shape here and then kind of come down like that. So we got that shape happening here. And this side's going to be stretched and so come down and then we're going to have this kind of shape like that. Another way to think about where the belly button goes is actually, they, they have it accurate pretty much, is uh, where you have the love handle. So love handles start to happen right here where the ribcage ends. So where the ribcage ends, if you imagine here's the ribcage, where the ribcage ends, the love handles actually start to come in right here. right? And then with, with females, they're, they're larger than men, or longer rather this way. Like that, and then, you know, then it flows into the rest of the hips. So that is how you think about it. The love handle is kind of coming in like that. And in between the love handles, pretty much right in the middle, so I, I, the whole point of drawing that was to show you if you have the love handles kind of coming in like this, right in the middle of the love handles, that's where the belly button is going to be. So pretty much you think about this right here. This would be the actual love handle shape here. Right in the middle of that is pretty much where the belly button is. Another way you can think about it too is if you take from the rib cage to the crotch, it's almost halfway between that is where the belly button will be. We might actually make the belly button a little bit lower, like right about here. And then you have the legs coming. And here is um, where we want to kind of, you know, change the the shape a little bit. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get rid of this so it doesn't confuse me. Let's kind of. Okay, so I'm I'm on like two different layers. I'm gonna kind of. Right. So to get a more realistic shape, we're gonna start like this. So basically, you can you start with the base shape of the ribcage as we did before, and you have that shape here. We divide it in half, and it's kind of coming at an angle like this, right? That gives us the collarbones, you know, collarbones kind of angle, and therefore the we have this pinch on this side and a more stretch on this side, right? And that gives us this angle of the hips right here, boom, like that. So now the hips are kind of at an angle like this, and that right there would be that basic underwear shape. So that's the idea of what we're thinking about. And then when you come here to the rib cage, you kind of come off with the skin like this. And then this is the hip, hip shape right there. And then this hip shape over here like that. That's the basic shape. And I think sometimes I like, I like to think about all this kind of just curving around like this. That's a kind of like a half circle. Just kind of to connect those two parts together. This is where the love handle kind of comes in like this. Boom, like that. This is where the love handle kind of comes in. So if I think about this line coming across, it kind of gives me this shape right here of the abdominal muscles, as you can see there. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get rid of some of all this here. We don't need it anymore. And this also kind of gives us a nice line for where you can put pants. So let's go ahead and we'll just put the pants right there. Boom, like that. Again, wrap the clothing around. So imagine a lips is going around the body like this. You want to wrap around, so right here on the edge, that's where the pants are wrapping around. I'm going to come down like this, like that. That will be one loop right there. The other loop is here, one here. These are going to be lower lower rider. So we're going to make these low rider pants because I think it looks better. Boom. There's the buckle. You have this shape that comes down like this. We'll have some wrinkles coming straight across sideways like that on the pants. And then the leg, so once you when you have the hip here, the hip comes down and then the leg comes out wider like this. Right? So overall you have this kind of you have the shape of your rib cage. You kind of bring this shape up like this, and that kind of creates the arch and then the love handles. And then just imagine this kind of coming down to like a mini skirt shape. And that gives you the female figure. And then we can come 
all the way down here to where the leg's going to be, and then, and then you start to come in. Because remember, the bone, femur bones like that, comes inside the leg. Like that, and then this leg is going to come. There's a tendon there. Leg comes out like that, and we're going to just kind of pull the leg off like that. So I think I made this leg a little bit too thick. It's kind of come more in like this. There we go. Get rid of that diagonal line that I had made before. Or like that. Get rid of some of these lines. They don't need to be there. The pocket kind of comes like that. This leg we could actually kick out more as well. So if we want to add even more power to this pose, we can kind of kick this leg out like that. just kind of adds more um, oomph to her what she's like trying to say follow the contour so the leg it kind of comes up like that that's the contour of the leg this part here sticks up higher because remember we have these these two muscles over here they have this bigger muscle here in the center so the leg kind of comes up like that's the contour and if you want to cut the leg from the side like if you're if you're like sitting down and these were like your thigh muscles and these are your hips up here and then you're coming out and the thighs are coming out and toward us like this like that right then you cut the leg it's going to kind of have a shape like that that's if we were to just cut the leg right in half right and then we just we can see the bone right here that'd be the bone right and then these, these would be all the blooded muscles that's kind of like what that leg looks like that's the shape so understanding the shape of the leg and the muscles is really important I'll be teaching all this in my new anatomy course. I have another. I have an anatomy course right now that teaches it as well, but I'm been teaching it in a more updated course because that one's quite old. Still really good, and also this one's gonna be more of a crash course, so it's gonna get all the information in a shorter amount of time. Instead of 60 hours, it's gonna be more like you know, hopefully less, hopefully less than 20. Anatomy is a big topic, though. So I know I'm, I'm wrapping around the form too. I'm doing this very fast, but um, kind of sloppy, but wrap around the form right here. See, that's wrapping around the form. So I'm, I'm imagining that lips going all the way around the leg. And so I'm just following that and I'm wrapping it around. Right. And I'm not going to bother. We're just going to do it. I think we're just going to stick to the sketch right now. Right. Get the idea. You can go and erase the stuff and refine it as you need to make this like get start to get thinner I imagine where that ribcage still is and that's where the breasts fall in the breasts fall in a heart shape so if you kind of imagine this heart shape like this that's the breast remember the breasts are fitting on top of a cylinder not on a flat wall if you just had a flat wall and you put rubber you know put some water balloons gravity would pull the water balloons down because the water is heavy and they would just kind of go like that, right? Let's make them closer together. They would just kind of fall down like that. But if they're on a cylinder, not, not a flat wall, because that's what they are on, the body is a cylinder, right? So if we put them on a cylinder, well, we have, we have a different result now. Now we have two water balloons on a cylinder, and because the cylinder has contour like this and wraps around, they kind of fall to the side like this, right? So the water balloons now are falling down and wrapping to the side, they're falling the contours of the ribcage keep that in mind when we draw the breast and also if you're size C or bigger the breasts are going to fit outside if you're like a B they're going to fit inside the ribcage like this so B's will pretty much fit inside they'll be contained inside the ribcage it might you know the very edge might come out a little bit and if you're really small you the space between the breast actually gets bigger and you still come out to that edge right there like technically it's like more like that but anyway with a larger breast we're gonna come like this go outside that just a little bit and remember we're doing ovals not circles like that oh, come on there we go Right, and then we can get rid of a lot of that. I just need we just need some of that there for 
when we draw the shirt. So erase some of that because we don't need a lot of these lines now. The neck, collarbones. I actually had a much longer version of this, but uh, I didn't like how the result came out, so I'm redoing it. So the shoulder kind of comes like this, kind of is a shape like that, and then it comes down, and then you have the arm. So remember, I already talked about how to fix your arm. And so the upper arm, the deltoid fits half of it, and then you have the bicep like this. And then the lower part of the arm, you have the forearm, it goes up higher here and lower here, so you have that angle. That's the basic shape of the arm in cartoon form. And you have that little piece of skin. And then we're going to take the clothing. We're going to remember the clothes wraps all the way around. So I'm imagining that. If you need to draw it first, draw it first, but draw it coming all the way around. And I'm just going to draw this shape right here coming from there and there like that, right? So I'm going to wrap it around the form. And then also there's a contour of the body. So the, the breasts have a contour like this. And as they come up here, they start getting flatter. And then it kind of just fades into the actual chest and all this right here has a contour about like that right so this is the contour like the 3d mesh of the body so you gotta think about that 3dness when you're drawing lines i don't i don't just draw this line straight down like that right because it has to follow the contours of the body so it has to kind of come up and over that breast right there right up and over this breast right here bam that would be how it would actually work I'm going to give it kind of small spaghetti straps here. That's the skin. Wrap around the breast and we're going to kind of follow the line like that. Oops. Right now we get rid of some of this. And that's because if you have like two balls let's say i have a ball here and you have a ball here right and i stretch cloth i put cloth over those balls it's going to stretch across the balls right it's not going to the, the contour actually goes like this right but it's not going to do that it's going to just go straight across right because the, the cloth is being stretched now if it's wet then the cloth would fit along the contour lines like that but in this case she's wearing a dry shirt so it stretches right across and I almost wonder if I should make that bigger, but actually, you know, in this case, if, if this was up higher, like that, maybe and we can, then we might be able to add another line in here and I'm just, I'm going to just do that, I guess. Sometimes I like to crisscross the, the wrinkles in the shirt like this. See that how they kind of, it's kind of creates like a Z. This side is being scrunched, so we're going to kind of draw some lines like that, scrunching up that side. This side is being stretched. But we can put a, she has the shirt with the um, knot in it. So we can kind of come like this, and that's the shirt wrinkle right there. We're going to kind of come up, I'm going to put the wrinkle on this side. Well, not the wrinkle, but the knot on this side. That's the two pieces of cloth coming out. The knot's kind of shaped like this. I have a couple little wrinkles, and these wrinkles might actually kind of extend upward like that, and then it's going to kind of come across and connect these. Just a few lines is fine. I have this side is huge. Wow, I just realized that. Um, hmm. I don't know if I want it to be that. It's pretty. It looks fine, I guess. It still looks huge to me. I have another another version I drew too that I took more time on that I'll show you in a second. I think it's about right actually. I could probably draw the pants come up a little bit higher. Maybe maybe more like there. I think that would help a little bit. That looks better. One thing I like to keep in mind is 
imagine the thickness of the rib cage here and kind of just follow that thickness parallel all the way down like this like that and then go how far how the hip shouldn't go out too farther than that um, it depends you know obviously if you want to have a really thick person you can which I'm doing here but if not that would actually not come out as far I actually added a little bit of fat here see that how it put how the pants are pushing up a little bit of love handle there that's actually normal that's a little piece of anatomy you can add in there let's get rid of that line now I didn't realize I didn't erase it we can add shadow here to the bottom plane because usually it's going to be in shadow the lights usually coming from the top right now we have a lot of foreshortening here so you have the kind of deltoid coming out like this and then the arm is going to be attaching to here so you can attach now attach the like where the bicep and stuff is going to be and then the and then you have the forearm coming out right away like this here boom and it's going to come down like this you might be able to see a little bit of overlap right there with that muscle I'm not going to go into all the muscles right now because it just takes too long to talk about I don't want this to be too long if you want to go more into the anatomy and stuff I recommend getting one of my courses on anatomy right so it's gonna kind of be like that now the hand is interesting so I mentioned like kind of what they did wrong with the hand so let's go ahead and imagine where the knuckles are gonna be here right about here like this and then they're gonna kind of curve in about like that and then we're gonna have this would be almost a straight line like this We'll have it come out like this. We'll have the one knuckle here, the big knuckle here. These knuckles are kind of just be reduced to almost like a line. And then there's kind of an angle like this where it's going to kind of come up like this. Let's kind of divide these into their equal parts. They're kind of coming up at an angle. See that? Like that. And then the pinky is going to be a little different. So the pinky is actually going to fall off a little bit short. So these are going to kind of go like that. Um, this one's actually a bit longer, so it's going to come out like this. This one's going to be a little bit shorter like that. There we go. This one's a little bit shorter. So it's going to kind of go like at a, at a line like that, but this knuckle's going to be like here. The pinky's going to go like that, and then it's going to come up right like here. That's that part of the pinky. And I'm going to just draw each one of these coming down. They're being all, all this part of the fingers being foreshortened. And it kind of comes up like that from this angle. That's the basic idea. And then the thumb is going to kind of come out here. We're going to see a little bit of that the meat part. And then you'll see that thin part. There's like the meat part. If you think about a hand, right, there's the, we have the this part of the hand. Then you have this triangle that comes off. That's the meaty part of the thumb. And then you have the straight line. And you have another meaty part like that. That's how I think about the thumb. And the knuckle is going to kind of come across like this. And this is actually going to cover these fingers like that. That's why I didn't add too much detail because I knew this, they're going to be covered. And then they stop right about here. And I actually think the knuckles are coming out too far. But what I can do actually is I don't want to have to redraw that, so I'm just going to grab this and just kind of pull it. This is this is the benefit of digital. You can't do that with pencil and paper, you know. I mean, you technically can. It just takes a longer it's a longer process. You can erase it, not erase it. Sorry, um, you could trace it over tracing paper, then erase it, then put the tracing paper down in a light box. You know, you can do all that work. And then you can redraw what you already drew again. So you don't have to redraw it. There we go. I only want like a little hint at the knuckle right there. But that's the basic idea. And then you just draw the face, whatever face you want to draw in there. So here's one of the end results. And I have another one which I didn't like at all because it just it came out too thin. Now, if you look at them back and forth, see, that they're, they're, everything's the same. Like, proportional-wise, the same. The head's where the head should be. The breasts are where the breasts are. All Everything's lining up. Hips where the hips are. 
But because I made everything um, thinner, right, because I, I really wanted to make the, the rib cage thinner, I ended up making the hips, I think, too thin. So I think if I would have came out with it and made the hips a little bit thicker, that would have helped everything fit more. But that's more more in line with what they drew. So at first I was kind of, I was trying to keep in line with what they did. But you can see that that's why it looks strange because you have this really big pinch that comes out. So and that's why this one this one looks a little bit a little bit weird. Whereas this one, look, the main difference is that the rib cage comes out and the hips come out a little bit. That's really all that changes. And by doing that, it makes it all look more more realistic and better. So just keep keep the proportions in mind. You could you could definitely um, pinch the rib cage in, but you want to make sure the hips kind of stay the same. So if you if I were to draw these rib cage, I would just draw the rib cage coming in thinner like this, but I would keep the hip, the hips about the same like that. And I could, I could do that, and that would make her look like thinner like that. But if you, yeah, anyway, if you look at like a lot of the cartoons with they, if they draw these really really thin waist like this, and then they have like these big breasts on here, like that, the really thin waist, they still have this kind of big hips. You know, they'll, they'll still come down and they'll have like, boom, like that. So they have the big lips and big hips, and then therefore the legs. Yeah, like that. So they'll kind of a shape like that maybe. So that's a really thin waist compared to how big the hips are, but you can make it work in a cartoon. But usually it means you have to keep the, oh man, why am I doing that? I should have just erased it with the, there's a faster way to do that. I don't know why I did that anyway. Okay, so you can see these are pretty close, pretty similar. I made the breast a little bit bigger on this one. So I could I could easily change that. I could just come here and just you know make that breast a little bit bigger. In fact, actually I kind of see that's kind of an issue there. I I, th I think I did make it a little bit smaller than the other breast. Actually, I should have matched them up more like that. Oh come on, I'm too far away. I need to zoom in a little bit like that. And then the faces I you can see I just added a basic face there, basic face there. It's kind of similar to their face. Oh, let me turn this back up. It's kind of similar to the face, but you know a little bit different as well. And so anyway, what we can do is come in here and add a face. I'll just do that really quickly here. I'm going to add the eye line more like here. Actually, I'm going to keep the eye line up there because technically I can just draw the head a little bit taller. You know, so I'm basically just kind of keeping the, the hairline in here. That's going to be like the hairline basically instead of the, the whole head. We can have the braids up there, and the braids can kind of come down like this. I'm not going to draw each individual braid, but... So I'm thinking if I have the nose right about here, and I can do the lips like this, I'm going to kind of just fit them in here, making sure this is going to work. Just basic shapes here. Almost. I'm going to have to raise it up a little bit to give her a big enough chin. But like that, so then I can have the eyes up here as well. I'm going to kind of make sure they're eye length apart. I usually kind of do this. Oh, that's ugly. Shape like that. It's kind of like a rhombus or whatever. Not a rhombus. Uh, um, what are those shapes called? This shape. A slanted rectangle. It's really hard for me to draw this this small. I should be on a higher resolution to draw this kind of details. So I'm going to keep it basic. And so I make, I'm going to make the eye bigger by making it taller. So when you want to make eyes bigger, make them taller first. Don't make them don't make them longer or wider, just make them taller. I still can't think of that. I'm, I'm the back of my mind as I'm drawing. I'm trying to think of the name of that. She was mad, so we can kind of bring her eyebrows up like this. I'm trying to think of the name of that shape. I know someone else is, that's watching this is like probably typing it right now as they're watching. We have a bunch of people typing the shape. A bunch of people that know what shape I'm thinking of, the name of it, they're gonna be like, you're gonna watch, I guarantee you'll see a bunch of it in the in the 
Actually, maybe you won't see a bunch of it. Depends on how many people watch this video. I want to draw this kind of like under part of the nose right here and then kind of just step up a little bit for the little nostrils and make them really thin because if you make it too uh, prominent it'll look like a pig you don't want it to look like a pig I'm gonna kind of go for this I think the face expression I don't know if they did this on purpose or not but I'm gonna kind of make that lip up a little bit higher and then I'm going to bring this line up like that to really kind of count for that shape. Those lighter. I like to connect my lines a little bit and then and then just make the parts dark that I want to make dark. Now, see now I, I think I put the nose up a little bit too high. So let's come back down just a little bit. Right about now what's happening. It's like moving the whole thing. Now we're going we're to add the cheekbones in here. And I'm just going to hint at them. You know, I think I messed this whole face up by being too close to it and not drawing it far away first. That nose is huge. Let's kind of change keep the shape the same I think but just make it a little bit smaller kinda of shade this lip in the eyes are ugly don't like them at all alright so I'm gonna come down down let's keep this line like this I might be able to kind of just hint at really low resolution, so I can't do much there. But I can kind of hint at the fact there's makeup underneath there, the lower eyelids. And by kind of pinching the eyes up like that, one thing I noticed, like, I don't know if I want to even say that because I think people might take offense to it. They might be like, oh, that's racist or something. Well, whatever, I might as well say it. Just know that I'm not saying it in any way except for artistically. And that is that something I've noticed, and I kind of, you know, I kind of do this when I'm drawing eyes, is I think about when I'm drawing African eyes. I think about more like how Asian eyes look and Asians are definitely you know evolutionarily they're more related to Africans than whites so yeah they have kind of what I do like what I try to do with African eyes is I try to angle them up a little bit more so like what this was a white girl I would have her eyes just come out straight like this like you know on a horizontal whereas the African eye it's almost the same thing so let's say that's the horizontal line right there. Almost exact same thing, except now I'm going to kind of come up like this. I'm going to slant that line just a little bit. You know? See what I'm saying? I just kind of slant it upwards a little bit like that. And with art, that kind of, you know, adds that kind of how Asians are. Another thing that Asians have is they have this, the way the skin folds over, 
right here is different, and that's why I do that. So you know, it's like a, a white person's eyelid, the way the eyelid tucks under, if you look at Asian eye. And oftentimes, like African eyes have something in between that's like similar, more to Asians though. So I kind of do that by making the eyes slanted like that, and it kind of gives more of an Asian look, I think. Not Asian, I mean African look, sorry. And then um, I'm just sticking to the kind of nose they drew. So they kind of drew this more nose like that. I think I added too much detail. Let's keep it basic. And there you have it. So now you have, you know, she almost looks like, uh, she still kind of looks African, but almost like, you know what she kind of looks like? That's so weird. I wasn't trying to make her look like this, but now that I look at her, she kind of looks like Bad Baby. What, you know, that girl like, catch me outside. Doesn't she? That's kind of funny. Kind of, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to make her look like that. I wasn't even thinking about that or anything. Just, I don't know, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it doesn't look like that at all. I'm just, just I think that. But let me know what you think. So you can have a couple, you know, stray things. Uh, like, naturally, dreads aren't going to just do that the way they drew it. You see how they drew the dreads? They're just kind of like flying everywhere. Dreads wouldn't really do that. But, uh, they would kind of all just fall, you know, down more and be t stacked on top of each other. But if you want to make them look all crazy like that, you can. So I, almost like, I don't know, winds blowing really hard because dreads are pretty heavy. But there you go. So now we have something that looks, you know, a lot better. And this looks very similar to this one, which I did really quickly. This was a quick sketch. I had a bunch of sloppy sketch underneath it, and this was a quick line work I did, I did over that just to kind of clean it up. And this was the first one, which I didn't like at all. Just like I said, I showed I, the main, but look at, just look at the difference. The, the difference is, isn't much. Like everything overlaps, where the breasts are overlap, where the belly buttons are, like almost everything overlaps perfectly. The only thing that's different is I made the rib cage a little bit wider and therefore the hips a little bit wider. That's it. I went with more realistic proportions. And that, that's all you need to do and everything else matches up good. And then another thing you might want to do is you can just add little shading right here. And what that does is it kind of it kind of hints at you know this right here like the uh, the love handles and there you go so that's pretty much it those are the things I'd recommend doing and thinking about when you're drawing and hopefully uh, you know this gives you a good idea of what not to do and what to do when I kind of usually I make the line kind of go from nipple to nipple that's what I'm thinking about so there we go. That's where that line should actually be more is like from nipple to nipple. Honestly, like if I think I would do this shirt differently. Like I think I would just come in closer like this. And then that way you want to even see where if there was any cleavage, if she was wearing a, a push up bra, it'd be like right there. But she's not, so but you might you know show like one little line or not, actually. I don't know, maybe. Because it's a cartoon, it might just show a little line there. Technically, this I don't know, maybe like that. I would just do one line, and then I'm going to add some shadow on this part of the shirt too, so it kind of matches what we have. And there we have it. So, and then after that, you just come in and you'd start adding, you know, some basic shadowing. And this side would be like this. Maybe that whole arm would kind of be in shadow. Maybe there's a little bit, a little bit of light hitting that side of the arm. And this part of the neck I'd put in shadow. Right here and here. This whole side of the face. Eyes. The nose. Part of the head. Hair. On each inside usually that gets shadow. But yeah, so. That's it. Shadow underneath here. A bit of shadow like this. Kind of making the shadow kind of match where the wrinkles would be, kind of. All right, cool. And maybe 
a little bit of shadow right there just to kind of show some anatomy all right thanks for watching if you enjoyed this do me a favor leave a thumbs up subscribe all that good stuff till next time